Hello, everyone. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start with the first talk, and Joseph Perla is going to talk about tech lead and engineering manager, which way to choose. So uh, Joseph is an engineering manager of passenger acquisition in the growth organization at, at Lyft, and he worked previously at Facebook and started a couple of, of startups as well. Um, and he shared with us actually great stories that uh, Kwong talked about, about this particular topic. So I think it's going to be uh, a very relevant talk from, from Joseph. So please welcome Joseph. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I've been working with Plato for the past few months, meeting different engineering leaders uh, at companies all around the US. And I've really enjoyed it. I think mentorship and giving back and teaching is, is really important. I've had great teachers growing up, and I find it really valuable to give back and, and learn from you guys as well. Um, one of the questions that I got from different engineering managers is how, if they have a senior engineer and they're trying to choose a path between going the people management route and becoming an engineering manager or to go down the engineering route and become a tech, tech lead, uh, which one do they choose? And in short, it comes down to what, what kind of work do you want to be doing? Do you want to be focused on the technical side and writing code and code reviewing and making decisions about that realm? Or do you want to focus on the people and the people's careers? And that'll make the choice really clear. I'm going to go into some details about that. I've worked at a lot of startups, uh, including Terminal.com and Turntable.fm. That was a very popular music website. Um, I also was a tech lead for the news feed on the iOS platform at Facebook. Um, when I first joined Facebook, my manager asked me, Hey, Joe, like you, you've done some leadership things at startups. Do you want to be an engineering manager at Facebook? And I said emphatically, no, that's, I do not want to be an engineering manager. Um, I was pretty, pretty young, pretty naive. I, I didn't know anything about big companies. And you know, I never had multiple layers. I was always like a co-founder. Um, the only thing I knew about engineering managers was from Dilbert comic strips. Uh, <laughs> That didn't make it seem very exciting. Uh, so I, I said no. I definitely didn't feel like I would get to code at all. If I were an engineering manager, I wouldn't be able to learn more about Objective-C. Um, I wouldn't have the freedom to define the direction of, of the code. Uh, whereas with, as a tech lead, I would be able to do that. Uh, my naive impression of this was, wasn't totally incorrect, but there's a lot more nuance to this. So I'll go into some details. There's a lot of overlap in what the tech lead and the engineering manager are expected to do. Uh, they do goal setting. They set OKRs, objectives, and key results. That's a term that Google popularized. Uh, they do both do resource allocation, roadmap planning. They plan out what exactly each team is going to do for the next quarter or the next year. Uh, they do product estimation, figure out how long each project is going to take, depending on which engineer is working on it. And the reason why it ends up being confusing also is because often uh, if you're an engineering manager of a small team or it's a lot of junior engineers, then the engineering manager often is the de facto tech lead. They're doing the engineering manager roles and responsibilities and they're doing the tech lead roles and responsibilities. But you know, once that starts to break, break down, really the tech lead has a whole different set of responsibilities and we'll go into that right now. Uh, the tech lead makes every major technical decision, and a lot of the minor technical decisions as well. They will review every line of code very often on a lot of teams, which means that they're going to be you know, nitpicking on every little bit, and that's going to make the team better from a technical standpoint. They are focused on extensibility and scalability. They're you know, in charge of writing the tech specs, or at least reviewing all of them. They make sure the API as a team is providing to clients is solid, it makes sense, it's going to be future-proofed. Uh, they know when to bring in other technical leaders from around the company to make decisions that will span across the team or the org or the company. Uh, at Facebook, I, I spent so much time just diving into mountains of technical debt and trying to figure out ways to get, get around all the different technical issues, and it was really fun. And debugging complex things is, is a big part of what you're going to do, the debugging things that other people on your team can't. And, and maintaining the technical respect of the whole team is, is super important. Um, an EM, totally different set of responsibilities. Uh, they're responsible for the overall goals of the team. That's how they're measured. Does the team, if the team does well, the engine manager does well. 
the, the, they're in charge of the people. They're in charge of their career growth and even their personal growth. Um, they're in charge of, of their happiness uh, day to day at work, maybe even talking to them about things outside of work. Um, one-on-ones. EMs do one-on-ones. They're expected to do one-on-ones every week, at least 30 minutes a week. Um, try not to miss them. At the one-on-ones, you give them feedback. You're always asking your tech lead. You're always asking other engineers, other engineers and other teams, feedback for that engineer and, and giving that to them in a way that is, is, is that they'll respond to. And that's why you have the one-on-ones, to build that personal connection with each of your direct reports in order for them to, 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 have, to trust you. Not, not on a technical level, but just on a personal level. Finally, the, the EM just kind of gets the job done. They are the overall manager for the team, which means that they'll step in whenever there's some, some need that needs to arise. They'll step in to be a tech lead if there's no tech lead. If the PM is on vacation uh, or the product manager is, it doesn't exist, there's no product manager for the team, the EM is the default product manager for the team too. The EM will find rooms and schedule times for meetings and decide the agenda. They'll fill in operational gaps. Um, for example, at Lyft, one time I had to call 50 drivers on the platform to help debug an issue with SMS sending. They weren't getting their phone verified, and I just had to call people. And it wasn't a fun job, but I had to do it and help the team. EMs work with tech leads, but they also work with product managers, technical project managers, product marketing managers. Um, as an EM, one trick is I, I made a Slack channel called Team Leads, and I just put them all in there. And when we want to make quick decisions, just type type in there. Um, but sometimes the EMs and tech leads are the same the same person when you have more junior people. But as a, a good EM is going to be trying to find one of their direct reports and and teach all of them really how to develop in their careers so that they can take on the full responsibilities of making all the technical decisions. So you're always looking to see who you can develop to be a tech lead. Um, that can be done incrementally by just giving them more responsibility over an individual project, but then eventually for the whole project. It's great for their careers, and it, if you can promote someone to be a tech lead, it frees up your time to do more of the people management stuff, which is, which is you can't, you can't spend more than enough time on that. Like, there's just too much work to do for each direct report to like really be serving their happiness and their careers and making all the right decisions for the team. Uh, team meetings. Uh, for example, the tech lead in a team meeting is going to be focused on the content. They're going to be focused on what, what speaker can I bring in who can teach them about queuing systems? What can I teach the team about how to write automated tests so that our team's uh, tests are more effective? An EM is more focused on how are the people interacting in this meeting? Is there, are, they, are the interactions courteous? Is everyone engaged in the team meeting? Um, so in all of my one-on-ones, I ask, you know, what can I be doing better? Uh, how are the team, team meetings going? I also send out a survey, an anonymous survey, so that the direct reports can tell me, oh, this meeting went really well, or I really like the speaker. One time, uh, one of the engineers said, hey, I, I really like the meeting, but it doesn't seem like everyone was engaged. There were people on their laptops. And I realized, oh, I was sending some emails from my laptops, too. My, my, my laptop as well. So uh, the next meeting, we instituted a laptop close policy for the, every meeting. So everyone closes their laptop. Instantly, everyone was more engaged. And as an engineering manager, those are the kinds of things you, you kind of look at, these like subtle interactions that will improve the engagement and just general fluid feeling for every, every team interaction. Uh, as an EM, I've, I've been focused on uh, every one-on-one -on -one providing certainty and meaning for each engineer. So they know what they're working on, and they feel a connection between what their project is and the team's goals, the company's OKRs, and even the company's long-term vision. When the engineers feel that, they make the right decisions. They can work more autonomously. You can trust them to make those decisions that benefit both their project in the short term and in the long term. Each one-on-one, -on -one, and outside of the one-on-ones, I'm thinking for hours for each of them, how can I improve their progression, both in their personal growth and career growth? How do I improve their learning, improve their skills? How do I make sure that they're working on the right projects, and how do I fit that into the team's goals? Your engineers can feel when you're, you're not thinking about their career, and you know, that makes them less happy and makes them want to leave the team or leave the company. 
So it's important to, to spend time on that and make sure you're, you're thinking about their, their careers. And you know, ultimately, they're responsible for, it, for that. But you are more experienced, and you're going to be able to help them achieve that even faster. Finally, and this is something a lot of engineering managers don't focus on as much, is uh, social inclusion. Uh, how do you get everybody in the team to get to know each other and really trust each other and build those connections within the team? Also, build those connections with people outside the team because you know, you're part of a bigger company and sometimes, often, you have to do things outside the team with other teams. And those connections can serve valuable even if you don't see them in the short term. Uh, one thing that I did a lot when I first became an EM is, is I did happy hours because that's what my previous manager was doing. But then I quickly realized that some of the new team members didn't drink, uh, just for religious reasons or other reasons, they, they didn't drink. And I, I realized that maybe those weren't the best team outings to do to include the feeling them feel included. So I started thinking more about talking to them one-on-one -on -one about what their interests were. A couple of them really liked movies. So we had an outing to go see the latest Spider-Man. They loved that. It was super fun, really easy. Everyone got into that. Uh, we had a team barbecue. And my team was particularly international. So I worked with each of them, and we cooked together a different dish from each of their countries. Branzini from the Philippines, another dish. And, and they just loved sharing, like goat from Africa. And they, they got to share this with each other and share a part of themselves. And that helped build that connection even more. Um, so to put a bow on it, uh, an EM is deeply focused on the people and uh, building a personal connection with each of them. Uh, an engineering manager also builds personal connections between each person on the team and even outside the team. Tech leads, on the other hand, are focused on the technical success of every line of code. The EM and the tech lead build something from nothing and together lead a team of engineers to success. Thank you. <laughs> Lyft is hiring as well. There's been a couple of questions that you could answer, Joseph, if you have like a few minutes. Okay. How, how much time? Do uh, okay. How do I grow? How do I grow as a manager of engineers without losing my edge as an engineer? I feel a conflict between doing the managing and maintaining my technical skills. Uh, yeah, I think you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're making a choice between being a people manager and being an engineering leader. And that's partly because you really are. Uh, to be a great technical leader, you really have to be deep in the code. And uh, there's more work for any one person to do just, just in that. And to be a great people manager uh, as your team grows, like beyond a handful of people, like there's just too much work to really serve them. And if, you're, if you have one fit in one and one fit in the other, you're going to be doing disservice to either the people or to the code, potentially. Um, when I was at Facebook, I chose to stay in the code. And that was really good for me. I got to work with some of the most brilliant engineers I've ever met and learn a lot about dispatch queues and other things. And, and that really sharpened my skills. I also did that at my last startup. Uh, I got pretty deep into infrastructure. Um, now, I, I, at, at Lyft, I, at the growth org, I was focused on uh, the people side of that and developing those connections. And that's just like a different choice. Um, some things that people do is switch between being a people manager and just focused on that entirely and then go back to being an IC and, and back and forth. That's, that's potentially some way you can, can keep that edge. Um, uh, also, as a manager, you, you, can take, you can still continue to take uh, like classes. Like maybe you want to take like a machine learning class online. And that'll at least keep you up to date roughly on, on where things are. Um, engineer, your engineers, your direct reports can teach you a little bit about what they are working on. And you know, you're, those are really smart people you're working with. They can probably explain it to you really well. So they can keep you like somewhat abreast of it. But you're, never, you're not going to be able to do a good service kind of writing sh and shipping production code while also being a people manager at scale, like more than just like a startup. Do you want to do another question? Do you have time? Yeah. Time for another. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks, thanks All right. Yeah.